talked about how I'm saying I can heat a home with one tenth of the wood of a conventional wood stove that's labeled at 75% efficiency. Uh, uh, how does that tie in to the fundamentals of physics? I think later she actually mentions uh, the laws of thermodynamics. Yeah. She's saying that, our, that the claim here is breaking the fundamental rules of physics and thermodynamics that we could use 10% of the wood to heat the people. Yeah, I, I think... you keep saying heat the home, and I keep saying heat the people, and, and I think that's an important distinction. But no, I think it's right, because if you're going to sit on this, then you're going to use maybe one one hundredth of the wood, because it's going to warm up your core temperature. It could be 50 in here, and we'll be perfectly comfortable. It'll feel like 70. And it's a really important distinction about how the heat is carried. So a conventional wood stove will do a certain amount of radiative, Right, you stand yeah. back and you're getting radiation. Right, right, but um, but it, most of the heat you're getting is in convective heat, right. carrying air around your house. And and my response to that is that the heat that's useful to you is the heat hot, that you can get inside of. If you don't get inside of it, you don't get to use it. And uh, you know a regular conventional wood box actually creates more heat per unit time than a rocket mass heater does, right? But it produces it fast. And so it's producing this fast heat that's going up the chimney and zipping past you and hitting the walls and working its way through your insulation and getting out. Yeah. Because it's fast heat, going fast, moving by like a freight train. But a rocket mass heater and masonry stoves in general are creating the slow heat because it's holding onto it with the mass the same, you know, you can't get away from, I say, 6,000 BTUs per pound of wood. Theoretically, it's 7,000, but you have inefficiencies and loss of the chimney. And it, so I say 6,000 BTUs per pound of wood is all you get. You can't fix that. You can't make it better. That's your limit. But you don't need all 6,000 pound, uh, 6,000 BTUs in 10 minutes. You need 6,000 BTUs over the course of hours. And that's the difference. That's all the difference. Really, it's the biggest difference. I agree that if you use conductive heat, you're going to heat people possibly a hundred times more efficiently than if you use convective heat. However, I also believe that most people just think, when they think of heat, they just think of convective heat for heating their home. They don't think of any other form of heat. And, and so when I did my tests last winter, and I got 0 0.60 cords of wood, used, I carefully watched a thermometer that was around the corner and in the house. So I think it was, you know, measuring a reasonable temperature that was a reasonable distance away from the rocket mass heater. Um, and, and so that's going to be measuring air temperature. Yeah. And, and, uh, and basically most of my time is not spent sitting on the mass. Most of my time is in a whole different room from the rocket mass heater. So I was going by how comfortable I felt, but you're right. If I worked at heating my person rather than heating the whole house, it could have been far more efficient. However, I didn't. Well, but more so, even then, if, even if you're using convective heat, right, it's the same amount of BTUs in a metal box stove versus applied to mass, the mass is going to let go of those BTUs so much slower, yeah. right, and you don't need, most of the <clears throat> BTUs that's being produced, like I said, is zipping right past and going right out the cracks in the windows. Or sitting way up here or in your room. Or sitting up in the ceiling, or you open the door and there they go, whoosh. So if I take a metal box stove and I produce 6,000 BTUs and then open the door, it's gone. If I take 6,000 BTUs and stick it in a stone, in a, in a masonry, when I open the door, I've only lost a few of those. I've lost a small percentage of the BTUs being used. And those, that comes right back, it heats the air again, and off we go and we're in the red. So the thing that she's mentioning is laws of physics. Oh, I think she's so misaligned them. Let's... I think you're right. I think that she's saying laws of physics, and she's assuming that this number, 75%, somehow is super glued to a, a textbook that says laws of physics. And it's like, no, 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 no. I'll, I'll give you an example from within her industry of the way in which we are breaking the laws of physics. A hundred percent efficient based on the rules of her industry a hundred percent efficient heater is a baseboard electric heater 
Okay. Because it's 100% efficient at turning electricity into waste heat. And yes, because that's that's the baseline. That's 100%. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you're accepting those as the laws of physics because that is the conventions of your industry, then a heat pump, a water source heat pump, is about 130% efficient or better. And within that industry, they claim 130% efficiency. So if you're not familiar with heat pumps, you're going to say, you can't have 130% efficiency. That's 130%. You can't have 130%. You can't okay. even have a hundred percent. You can't have a hundred percent because of laws of thermodynamics. Okay, no. but if you're setting something as the hundred percent mark, and then you're saying, okay, then I wrap it in a blanket, or uh, then I put it all in the stone and hold that stone inside of the blanket with me, so that I don't have to uh, care about how warm it is outside of the blanket. You're you're violating the conventions of an industry that uh, that works very well on its own numbers, thank you very much. But the things that we are doing, um, when we are changing the conversation, and if we don't extend the conversation to include how we're changing it, then it's not nobody is going with a credential is going to give us much of a hearing without calling us fools because well you can't violate the laws of physics. You're right, I can't. But if the warmth is below me and right here, I don't have to produce as much. Or my electric blanket wouldn't be something that I use because my electric blanket uh, wouldn't cost me any less than heating the whole room and being comfy without that electric blanket. No, my electric blanket uses a very small fraction of the amount of, uh, of energy that heating my house does and keeps me much more comfortable, actually. And that's another. That's an example of the way in which we need to bridge this gap, uh, and and that's and and have the conversation extend to what we're actually talking about instead of having it sit there and people just staying cold, because that's what happens is people are suffering, needlessly because they can't afford to heat their houses, and they are being told that uh, that we're being silly and they should not pay attention. And if instead we can say, no, come have a seat and let's talk and let's talk about where that heat goes uh, and let's talk about what those percentages actually mean. No, she's not an idiot. She works very well with the things that she works with every day. Um, but I'd like you to sit on this bench while we talk. We're, we're not measuring the laws of physics. We're measuring what happened in the woodshed. Yeah. You know, it's, totally. uh, these numbers are coming out of people's direct experience. And when we have someone who, and it's actually kind of rare for someone to heat exclusively with a wood stove and then heat exclusively with a rocket mass heater. A lot of times there's lights in the house. There's a propane furnace that they're using the wood stove to cut the propane bill. And so it's, they're, they're, it's kind of complex to figure out what actually happened with the energy bill to begin with. But the laws of physics that we talk about when we teach people how to build and use these stoves, uh, convection, conduction, radiation, and looking at conduction as efficient heat transfer. Um, we, people kind of have to, well, we hope they would understand insulation, thermal mass, and how, how heat travels through conductivity, both to you and escaping the house. Um, and I think the one she's worried about is the laws of thermodynamics. Uh, energy is neither created nor destroyed, and systems proceed to increasing entropy. The beautiful thing in the heating industry is that entropy generally produces heat. And so most systems, if they're going to produce a waste product, it's going to be heat. And where I, I, I again, I just think she's assuming that a number that 75% is taken out of 100% that's a physical reality, and it's not. It's taken out of 100% that's a regulatory convention. And then what actually happens in reality involves a system running at 75% while it's in the laboratory, maybe, if the laboratory actually double checks that model. And possibly will run by someone like Peter, who actually reads the manual and operates the stove according to the instructions, <laughs> and running at maybe half that for the average user when they're paying attention. 
and possibly at negative efficiency at the end of a burn cycle at night when they have the air open and there's no fuel being burned. And so it's, it's I, I think that 75% is a fundamental error. If you, if you assume that that's true, then all the rest of it doesn't make a lick of sense. So yeah, I think it has nothing to do with the laws of physics. It has everything to do with her belief in that number and that she doesn't know what's behind that number. That's She's just told to regurgitate the number and, and convey the number to others, and she doesn't really know what's behind it. If you like this sort of thing, come on out to the forums at permies.com, where we talk about rocket mass heaters, homesteading, and permaculture all the time.